All right. Anyway, so I don't want to take credit for the work that Sean, one of our residents, has done with a couple of our postdocs, but this is the system that we have used. I, you guys already hear Dr. Rock. This is a 70-year-old man with history of seizures, memory loss, left upper extremity weakness. This is the preoperative MRI. It's just going to be a couple of minutes. You can actually see a very deep posterior thalamic lesion. It's a very, uh, very daunting, actually, type of tumors that you know, as brain tumor surgeons, we encounter from time to time. This is the actual patient in the operating room. I since then have learned you can actually do a very small cordycectomy. That's actually, we can even do it smaller than that. Sean has been doing a wonderful work actually identifying the corticospinal tracts to try to make dissections through that, getting in. This is the actual system that I've been using. It's just a Greenberg retractor to actually hold this in place. That is the actual holder. And I think that we're going to get into, we use the navigation system. This is the intraoperative suite uh, scan. You can actually see going after the lesion um, at this point with another one of our residents right here using the navigation system to just go ahead and dissect the tract. This is under the microscope where we do the dissection. That's just all the uh, amount of tissue. What you saw is what we ended up taking as we did the dissection. And other than that, the brain is separated and you can actually do this, I'm actually going under the microscope to go and do the actual uh, tumor resection in this case. When we're doing the tumor resection, everything obviously we're using a combination of the navigation system as well as the microscope going back and forth with a uh, small, uh, small sort of uh, suction device, a little bit of bipolar. I like to use the bipolar that we use mostly in the pituitary cases as well, which is a long bipolar, so that way we can actually go deep. The tumor is done. I go ahead and remove the device very carefully. As you can imagine, you can actually see it's a very flexible arm, which is the Greenberg in this case. We remove it and you can actually see the cordycectomy just falls back into place. Uh, Sean is actually quantifying very scientifically with uh, imaging, uh, especially the flare navigation, whether or not there's any swelling on this. And that's the actual resection. It's not a complete resection. There was a little bit of tumor, but anybody who's done this tumor very deep in the thalamus will recognize that these are very, very challenging uh, lesions right here. And that's the actual um, uh, device that we use. And I'm going to move the other two cases that I have right here. See if I can pull them for you. The next um, cases, so that was one of the cases, a deep thalamic. I'm going to show once again with Sean and uh, two of our postdocs in the laboratory. We're going to go in. This is a 41-year-old woman, memory problems, nausea, vomiting, headaches. So this is pointing into a hydrocephalic type of question. You can actually see the lesion right here. Also going through the foramen of Monroe, very challenging. Actually, I tried to go after this lesion first just with the pure endoscope, and it was very challenging. I called it Steve. We ended up bringing the Vicor system with it through a very small cordycectomy right through Coker's point on the right side, and you can actually see the lesion right here, right at the foramen of Monroe, and it was a colloid cyst. And we're gonna do, you can actually see the venous uh, system going into the venous angle right here, the choroid plexus. So we begin to do this just like any microsurgical dissection. Going with the endoscope, for me anyways, in my limited experience, has been very challenging actually. And I discussed this, Dr. George Jallo, who's one of our pediatric neurosurgeons, has been using exactly the same, the same uh, um, device to do his cases. And he's a very experienced endoscopic surgeon. So it's been very, very challenging. So you can actually see the complete resection in this case of this lesion right at the actual uh, foramen of uh, Monroe through a very small, and Steve, what, uh, what tube do we use? We use the smallest tube actually. And then at the end, you can actually see a complete resection of, of uh, this case, actually. The next case, it was actually the very first case that I did with Steve, you know, over, over a year ago, when we had another patient. This is a 41-year-old man with a uh, history of AIDS, right-sided weakness, workout show, a lesion, very deep anterior thalamic. You can actually see right here into the insula, dominant hemisphere, very challenging lesions to get into. I couldn't do an awake craniotomy. We needed to obtain tissue, so we ended up doing a supraorbital craniotomy, going through the left side, a supraciliary approach, right through the eyebrow. We came down with the surgical navigation. You can actually see the navigation system, same setup with the actual Greenberg retractor, and you can actually see the post-op. And this actually turned out to be a very um, challenging also uh, type of uh, uh, lesion and infection actually so we did also a very good thorough resection so I think that this, the actual uh, 
uh, videos that Shan put together with the postdoc, post, uh, postdocs in the lab, they're pretty self-explanatory. It's really not complex, for, and my experience has been for a very, for me what I'm interested in is deep brain lesions, and that's where I found it to be most useful. Most of the time when I put retractor system, there's a little bit of give and take, obviously, and putting the blades in there. Sometimes you end up pushing them or pulling them out. For me, it just makes really a, a very simple device that I can go in and push some of the times the corticospinal tracts and actually it's, it's allowed us to really do approach these deep lesions and now we're quantifying actually in a very systematic way what the actual edema, what is the damage you ended up potentially causing that in my experience once again this patient has done very well but hopefully Sean will be producing a manuscript, of, a peer review manuscript pretty soon about that. Yep. So thank you very much. I don't mean to you know take your time. You have more important things to do I'm sure. <laughs> Thank you. So much. My pleasure. Thank you. Well, you got to come visit. Go.